Moonlight. I finally got a chance to get back around to watching Moonlight, which won Best Picture a couple of years ago. And what a interesting film it is. It's divided into three chapters, which are based on names that the main character variously has for himself, that, that others call him. Uh, the name Little, his given name, Chiron, or Chiron, depending on who's talking, and then Black at the end of his life, which is a little bit misleading because in my mind it doesn't actually say much about names. I I expected it to be uh, one of the movies which has important things to say about the names we refer to ourselves as and how they help define us and what the significance is of all of that. Uh, movies like Baby Driver do a good job of that. Moonlight doesn't much engage that subject, uh, despite its chapter deviations. Instead, I think the names serve to increase the, the, the meaning and the, the profundity of another message that it seems to say that has largely to do with what's important and what's significant. Moonlight is, in many ways, a similar movie to Boyhood which is a movie that I really loved. Um, a movie that took a incredibly long time to make because it was filmed in real time about a boy growing up. And so the same actor was actually filmed at various stages of his growth. But as for plot, Boyhood didn't have much of one. It was just about life, kind of a average, slice of life of your average American boy. Moonlight, without the gimmick, does the same thing, only it's not your average American white boy anymore. Now it's a gay black kid growing into a gay black man. And so a statement is being made, um, both by making the movie and then by the movie receiving a Academy Award for Best Picture about what kinds of stories are worth telling? What kinds of stories are worthy of our attention? And, and might it be important to talk about the average life of a gay black individual, at least as much as it is to talk about typical life of a white kid like me? Well, that's interesting. But without the gimmick, it wasn't able to kind of slowly ease up into the, the various days in the life of Chiron, and instead told his story through three very short time periods in his life. Um, a, a time when he's a young child, a time when he's a teenager, and a time when he's an adult. That ends up making a profound statement in and of itself, because it wasn't this thing, this, this reality of his life that was long standing through his childhood that positively affected him into thinking that color names are kind of cool. It was a moment on the beach in Miami when he heard that story. And similarly, it wasn't a long stretch in his adolescence that really formed him into being the hard uh, gangster drug dealer that he would become late in life. That was one day when, after another significant moment on Miami Beach, things turned horribly wrong and he chose to take out his emotions on the back of a bully in a way that for us as an audience was understandable, but for law enforcement certainly never would be and landed him in juvie. And then without seeing any of his experience in juvenile hall, we turn to him as an adult and find that the things that are gonna be most important to him, the days that he will look back on as most significant may not be the things that chronologue a long period of his life, but maybe 
one significant conversation in a diner with an old friend and after. And so right when it seemed to me like the movie was finally taking off and leading to its conclusion, to putting all of the relationships in place that would be the start of a typical movie, the curtain fell and the cast rolled. This relationship might just be one night, but does that mean that it's insignificant? Certainly as we look back on our own lives, it seems like the most significant moments are more fleeting than the more mundane ones. I think that's an interesting idea worthy of consideration. So in the interest of consideration, let me ask you a question about the Bible. When you engage the scriptures, how do you find the important parts? Are the important parts those sentences which are repeated most often? Are they the portions that are given the greatest number of pages in terms of chunks of scripture? Are they the things that are returned to most consistently or are they just the bits that glimmer? The bits that seem to stick out to you? So many of us turn to passages like John 3.16, which was a small part of a conversation between Jesus and Nicodemus. And certainly very, very many of us look to one day of Jesus' life as the most significant, not only of his life, but of human history. What matters and when? And when in scenes of glory I sing the new, new song, twill be the old, old story that I.